Hey guys, this is the first part introduction to testing on Android. It's uh, always been my weakest part on, uh, of Android development and uh, I finally reached the point where I figured just uh, I need to learn this stuff because uh, manual testing is just a big pain in the ass and if you have a big Android app and uh, you got uh, many new features coming out all the time then you either rely on testing team or if you don't have it you gotta do everything yourself and uh, manual testing is just the worst it's just boring and you just skip it and uh, then you just uh, end up with the horrible software that you put out so let's figure out which part can we automate and how tests can make our life easier in this video i'm just gonna describe each category of tests and just some overview of each and uh, the following posts are gonna cover each category in details. So basically there is three categories of uh, tests on Android. Small, medium and large. This is a uh, pyramid from official Google Docs here. It's somewhat confusing because it says a different thing here and here, but basically it doesn't matter. I just uh, put some hints here. I found out that there is uh, basically two categories of tests depending on where they are on it's either local or integration local means that they just run on your computer without installing on android device or emulator and integration tests they do require to in install it on your android device and there is the categories depending on uh, like the type of tests which are unit and UI tests. So unit are mostly like a simple targeted uh, test, somewhat like just to test one method, test your database. It all comes into those uh, small and medium tests. And UI tests are more complex, uh, more close to your real manual kind of UI testing. And uh, coming from here, uh, Google recommends uh, that we write 70% of small tests, which are local unit tests, 20% of uh, medium tests, which are integration unit tests, and 10% uh, large UI tests. I'm just gonna trust the data for now, because uh, now I'm just uh, really new to testing, and uh, what I've learned is uh, you basically need to learn by practice, because uh, none of the tutorials are really uh, kind of full and uh, cover the whole process of uh, uh, the mindset and the thought process that you go through when writing tests. There is just an overall description of how you write tests and uh, that's it. They basically set you free with that. And in this series, of first we're gonna go through all the different categories and then for each one I'm gonna give you several examples. And after we've learned all those categories, we're gonna go through writing an actual app and uh, cover it with tests. So let's just uh, go through every category just in a little bit more in details, uh, just to understand uh, what can you get with those. Uh, small tests are local unit tests. They run on your computer and they don't have any access to Android framework. This means that uh, you cannot access context or parsellable class or uh, using databases and uh, of course launching activities, you cannot do that. So obviously those are very simple tests, right? Uh, something like string parsing, uh, JSON parsing, but uh, hold on, they say that uh, it, sh it should be like 70% of those tests, right? And here's how you can achieve that. So there's two libraries, Makita and Roboelectric, which uh, help you to mock Android framework. So how Makita works is basically you you provide your own uh, implementation for methods that you want, because you still have the access to Android framework classes. Uh, I mean, you can still import them and access their methods, but you can uh, get a an exception. It says here that you just get a modified Android jar, which throws exceptions on every method. So you need to mock them. And also there's a Roboelectric library, which uh, kind of like uh, brings you very close to instrumented tests. But basically it's somewhat like a an actual UI test, but on your local machine, which sounds just great. Now let's get to medium tests, which are called integration tests. Those run on an actual Android device. 
uh, they are still unit tests, so they don't have any UI or activities to launch. You would use them in cases where you want to use uh, Android framework classes like context, parcelable, databases, or uh, anything else. And you don't want to mock uh, those methods. And since to run those, you need to install them on an actual device. Those are slower than local tests. And UI tests or uh, large tests are uh, somewhat like you actually running your app and uh, just going through navigating and interacting and uh, testing the, the app. And there is uh, two libraries uh, which you could use. One is Espresso, which is the most popular. It provides a great API to find views, interact with them, perform uh, typing or clicking, scrolling, and then you can verify the correct UI state. And the cool part about this is that it runs on your actual device and uh, you see it uh, as if you were doing those uh, interactions. And the second library is UI Tomator. It's uh, somewhat close to Espresso. We're gonna get deep into each of those in more details and the difference between uh, those. So those are three main categories for testing on Android. But there's uh, two more tools to test UI with ADB. First one is Monkey Runner, so it's a Python script that you write to interact with your app and uh, catch uh, crashes and uh, take screenshots of uh, UI state when you want. And the second one is ADB Monkey, which is a simple command line tool which you just need to run with one command like uh, this telling it's your app package and number of interactions to take. So it just runs through your app and uh, clicks on stuff uh, like crazy, just, I think, just to uh, see if your app crashes. And here comes the overview of uh, test types on Android, but it's worth nothing without uh, actually writing those tests and uh, understanding how you even do that. So stay tuned, subscribe if you want to get more stuff from me and uh, talk to you later.